everyone. Welcome to the Jamie Love Show. I have two special guests here with me today. We have Annette Bedalian. Her raw journey started uh, 13 years ago, same as me. And we have Taylor Bud. His raw journey started 15 years ago. So, so excited to talk to them and hear about their journey and just see where the conversation goes. So, Taylor, let's start with you. When, you know, like, tell me a little bit about how your journey started 15 years ago, what inspired you to change your health, and just kind of follow this path. Uh, in the 2008, uh, I got introduced to uh, Dr. Sebi, and uh, that was just, uh, it changed everything in my, as far as like my ingredients, and I, I really uh, dove right into the raw food thing, and um, I, I'm glad, I, and I'm glad I did, I got into the, to the fasting and everything like that early on, and, and uh, I think the only reason I would ever bounce back at different periods was just trying to be sociable, but... I think it just reached a point where I could no longer really bend in that way. And raw foods just make more sense in every way, I feel like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I when I first went raw 13 years ago, one of the main reasons that I fell off or I went back to eating cooked foods was the social aspect of it. It was just really hard not having the support from my family and my ex-husband you know didn't follow follow the journey with me and you know just having to cook for my kids and stuff so the social aspect is really hard what i realized like now after 13 years is like it's been a whole process of just trying to fit my life around this lifestyle so that you know it you know like changing my lifestyle so that i don't have like so many temptations or i'm not always in those social settings you feel like you have kind of come that far after you know 15 years Oh, yeah, adapting. Yeah, adapting. Yeah, always. Yeah. 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 No, it's been a, it's been a long process. I know, like if, you know, if you've had children or a significant other, I know it's probably difficult. You know, if they're not on the same page, like especially, I guess, like did you did you meet prior to uh, shifting your diet? Yeah, actually, it was it was hard. I, I was not a meat eater, but I wasn't vegan when I met my husband. So when I got pregnant. I, my mom had already started reading to me about health and, you know, animal factory farming and things like that. So I had, I was already went vegan when I got pregnant with my son. And when I was pregnant with him, my husband and I got to an argument because he's like, I'm not raising our kid vegan. So it, you know, it was just, it was complicated right from the start, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Were you having to cook for them and stuff too? Oh yeah, it was really hard, um, and it's probably it was probably one of the biggest reasons why I ended up leaving, you know, like splitting up with my ex-husband. Because, I mean, it was just it was a battle, just finding restaurants to go to, like agreeing on what to have for dinner. You know, like I felt like my whole life was in the kitchen cooking for everybody else when I wanted to live such a simple lifestyle. Like I'm like, you know, one of the main reasons I wanted to go raw is because I wanted simplicity in my life. I don't want to be slaving over a hot stove, like, you know, constantly trying to find recipes and cook for other people. Like, you know, it's really a distraction. Like, all that time and energy that people put into shopping, you know, um, preparing, preparing for cooking, two, three cleaning hours. up hours after, yeah. putting in the dishwasher. It's just like you could be using all that time for some creative endeavors anything right? else anything yeah. else anything literally else. not dissing anybody you know people we cooked with i just didn't want that for my life yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i think that the more that the longer it takes to clean it up usually like kind of like a, as within so without kind of thing where if it's a lot of cleanup afterward it's probably a lot of cleanup in your body like it's a lot your body probably has to do a lot it's taxing a lot i think mm -hmm. and think yeah. of the feng shui too Cause you know how like your environment, if it's messy, it's your energy field is cluttered. You make a smoothie, it's like just clean the blender in a glass or something, or if you have just an apple or whatever it is, it's just like, it's, it's, a, yeah, it's in its container already. Like, mm -hmm. you know, have a melon, it's already a bowl. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't really make sense. I feel like so much stuff, like as far as the preparation and cleaning up, that's just like you said, so much, it's just leaching other areas of your life. I feel like that you just, not gonna have time for. How is your diet com like now compared to when you guys first started? Uh, for me, it's a lot more. It's very simple. It's a lot of juices, sometimes salads, sometimes fruit smoothies, but keep it really simple mm -hmm. on the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, and when I first started, it was, uh, I kind of, I think I jumped in it so hard that it kind of made it a shock to like my family and people, you know, I guess even to myself at some level, but because I, I, I weighed a lot, I was like in the gym a lot, I was like, you know, like 30 pounds heavier. And um, I felt like, you know, it kind of shocked people to lose the weight, but I felt good though. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, I didn't really want to sacrifice like how people perceived me for how good I was feeling. But um, it was really, I think it was really simple then, you know, I, I kind of just started off with just like sprouted almonds and bananas. Like, I think that was like my, like 98% of my diet. But now, oh, it's, wow. yeah, now you jumped in simple. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did like yeah. the gourmet. Like oh, I was, yeah. I was making like layer cakes <laughs> and yeah, and dehydrated yeah. coconut jerky and my yeah. my addictions were real. You know, right. my first transition, like the cravings. Oh my gosh, it was unbearable. Yeah. Like my ego was fighting it so hard. Like I was like laying on the floor, like screaming because I wanted to eat something so bad. Oh wow! Yeah, what were you having? Um, what was I having? Yeah, just raw food, just you know, salads, smoothies, juices. Uh, and you're you're craving for like cooked stuff. Oh or, yeah, yeah. Because like I said, I was living with my ex husband and my kids. It was all in your face. It was in my face all day long. My um, ex husband would come home. He'd be like tubs of ice cream, cookies, like all my favorite things. They'd eat, he'd eat, eat, eat pizza in front of me at the dinner table. You know, it was really hard, you guys. Yeah. It was really hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's got to be tough. Like, you know, you're not bringing it in your house, I guess it's not so bad. But yeah, when it's around you like that, I guess it's more tempting. And the smells and stuff, I imagine, yeah. are really, like, all-encompassing. Oh, yeah. Did you have family dishes that were, like, uh, typical for, like, the family, like, uh, like, I don't know uh, if you have like a cultural dish in your family that you just like couldn't let go of or anything like that that was around that made it difficult. <laughs> well, that was another thing too. I was I was doing really well because my husband, my ex husband, would get deployed overseas. So then he ended up, you know, when he was home, it was really hard. And then when he left, it was a lot easier. I had more control over what the kids ate. I had control over what was in the house. I didn't have to go to restaurants if I didn't want to. So while he was gone for months at a time, you know, it was a lot easier. But then every time I would go back to Florida, my mom would make these dishes that I just love, you know, stuffed artichokes with breadcrumbs. And, um, you know, she'd make this cake that, you know, she'd been making since birth, you know, like just this oh, all the things that traditional you know. cake for all the birthdays, you know, and I was like, oh my gosh. So, you know, it's always like, it's always something attached to emotion. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And like memories. Memories, yeah. 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 It's all nostalgic. Because it's not nutritional. It's not like our body is, it needs it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah kind of like all you're getting out of it is like the love your mom put in it, I guess. You know, that. I mean, that's something, but it's not going <laughs> to be good for longevity. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough. I don't know. I, you know, after after a while, yeah, it just became more of a, re- a reduction thing. I guess you're just like, what do you, the weighing of it is like, you know, do I want to uh, appease other people or like, you know, succumb to this stuff? Or do I just like, am I okay with just feeling good? Because yeah, like I, for a while there, I guess it was just like texture and taste, but then it, it really reached a point where I was like, how does this food make me feel? Mm-hmm. And and then that's kind of I think green juice really helped me and coconut water I feel like really going in like extensively like going through periods of fasting with them it coming back I feel like it's it is a lesson when you like come back to something even if it is like you going from uh, fruit to uh, you know some gourmet stuff that might be more dense and maybe not the best food combination mm-hmm. I feel like you do learn a lot because you're just like man that. I thought that tasted good, but it does or whatever, but it's not it really, does. it's not worth the, yeah, the yeah. process that really is not, it's painful. Yeah, sometimes I do that on purpose, like I'll do like a complicated, you know, gourmet raw thing. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, every second of it, it's worth it during it. And then right after I'm like, all right, let's go back to simple. That's all I want for like, yeah. <laughs> gets me right back for the next week easy. But yeah. you know, there, it, life is balanced. Sometimes, you know, I think it's great, especially in the beginning at incorporating those gourmet raw foods and then, you know, slowly start removing things out of your diet. You know, like you go to gourmet, then you go a little cleaner, then you start taking salt out of your diet. 
you know, then you then you're going to, you know, less fats or whatever it is. Then yeah. maybe go down to two meals a day, you know. Like maybe. the organic process, not the overnight yeah. extremism. Yeah, because your body's going to know. You're not priming your body for it. Yeah. 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 Or your mind. A lot of it's your mind, too. Yeah, just the idea of wanting to eat all day is an addiction in itself, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes yeah. we're just eating, even if we're not hungry, just because it's the act of eating, the act of like putting something it's in like your body. It's a pacifier. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's exactly it. Yeah. I mean, um, I think that uh, it's uh, it really is like I think it's just a uh, the it's such a, a process like a like a process of elimination over years. You know, I don't think it's anything that you really want to. I, I feel like you should enjoy every phase. I don't think it's something that you really want to bypass anything in. I think you have to find the right variation of the raw food diet that works yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. I love salads and, and I like avocado. Well, avocado is a fruit, but it is higher fat. Yeah. Um, I like flax crackers, like making avocado toast. I'm not afraid to use olive oil. Um, I like spices on my food, you know, just to like flavor things up. But yeah. But that's the thing is like everyone's gonna have their own way of doing things, you know. Yeah. Everyone's on their own process. And that, yeah. that that's another thing too is like it's not for me. It's less about the destination of like having this label of like, I'm, I want to be this, or I'm, I'm growing into this, but like more of the process, like you said, of self-discovery through this journey. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, been such a spiritual path for me. What about you guys? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I think that's where people uh, relapse to, because they look at it more like on a mechanical level. And, you know, I feel like cleansing and stuff, they, they go, it gets more mechanical, and then I feel like that's how you can fall back because it's it's so much more to like what you eat like you were saying it's like emotional and there's so many more things tied to it like your whole process of eating is like it's a reflection of your relationship with yourself and like your relationship with life itself like the way you go about eating your selection you know of what you're eating and everything the whole process is you know metaphysical it's not it's not just rudimentary you know uh like mechanical like animalistic eating it's not like that and i think people look at it like like kind of like that and get caught up in that like you know i think that's the pitfall of um focusing so much on the yeah, like the the destination yeah i don't yeah. think people look at like what they're consuming as that nuanced thing of where you're at they just do it like a program because we're programmed to eat whatever standard american diets three times a day and uh you know, you come across people that kind of have simplified it like us and, and it's like an extreme thing for people, you know, to, yeah. to, to accept kind of. And Could you imagine if everybody wasn't so obsessed with food, yeah. how much we would create in the world? Yeah. Can we just eat how we want to eat? And, yeah. you know, just be healthy and then let's move on to something else, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why does the focus always have to be so much about, like, yeah. you know, food and all the time, but... Distractions yeah. and complications. Distractions. But there, I guess there are different levels of, you know, we do need people in the world to help inspire people and to educate. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, like, all about your pattern, the pattern that you leave, like, because, you, you know, I think, yeah, action's always going to speak louder and, like, I think for uh, like cleansing or changing your lifestyle, like from my experience, like if I'm going through a, a creative process, the more that I eat, the more that it gets impeded upon. Like it's not, it's now I'm being more distracted. I feel like from it. Whenever I'm in any kind of creative process, whether it be writing or making music or whatever, I, I'd imagine that like if you was to go into this process, like of having uh, even having a child with someone that's like in a similar uh, wavelength that whole creative process would eliminate your appetite, I feel like. Because the creation, I feel like, I feel like fasting is more like a byproduct of creation. Like, when you're creating, you're not hungry. You're yeah. eating off of other things. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you You'll go all day creating something, right? Without yeah. eating? Yeah. 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 yeah totally. I think your communication... I think about it. Yeah. Your communication with yourself, I feel like it's just so strong. And the food is just more so like a reminder of 
something, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, you need, you know, you need to be reminded of your energy. You know, you need to be reminded, there's some type of communication that needs to be reestablished. And mm. I think that's what the food is more so there. Like, it's like, like you said, it's not like I'm focusing on the food like this. I'm more so using it as a medicine or a reminder so that I can get, stay on course for what I'm trying to do. It's not like I'm focused on like, you know, like what can I eat next? It's like, yeah. you know, this is just a means to continue on doing, you know, my creative process, like in my life. My yeah, whole, my whole life. Like you said, it's a ri- reminder, kind of. It's a ground, grounding thing. There is still that social aspect of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you don't want to isolate completely. Like that can get a little tough, just on relationships sometimes. But I did that. I've done that. But isolation. Yeah, yeah. I had to like, I like, I pulled myself out of, out of the the world for a few years. Wasn't on social media didn't go to do anything. I was just really focused on my spiritual path and just working through all my shit. What were you doing to, to during that time? Um, well, I had my kids still, but my it was after my divorce and I really started, you know, to wake up and, you know, I, um, I didn't want to go out, like, drinking anymore. This was, like, maybe eight or nine years ago. And then started meditating, started, um, you know, I, I had always been spiritual, but I never really kind of put time into my spiritual path. So, you know, just changing my mindset, things like that. And then when I met my husband, we had two years with each other where we weren't working. You know, we were just like, we had savings and things like that. So we did a lot of plant medicines and we did a lot of just being out in nature, we go hiking a lot, and we just really cut ourselves off from civilization other than my kids. And did a, just did a lot of work on ourselves, healing generational traumas and things like that, childhood wounds and all that good stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. The shadow work, you know, doing shadow work. Like, it was weird. Like, at, during this healing, I would feel people in my family, their energy come up where I felt like I was them. It happened to me last night. I I literally felt like I felt my mother and my father's energy last night. Like yesterday, I was just like, I was just like laying, I think I was, I was like laying and working on my phone or something and I could just still feel their energy inside of me. Do you guys ever experience that? Like as you're healing and detoxing, like purifying you can feel the patterns from your childhood of who you picked up that pattern from or that behavior yeah i think so i think i felt that like more into like during like deeper fasts and stuff like that that's when like stored emotional stuff will come up yeah like i'll speak in a certain manner or a certain tone or i'll say a joke or i'll I'll, you know I'll, i'll just i'll my personality comes out and then I'll have a thought of like, oh, that's where that originated that from. from. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And you become aware of it, which you never were before. And then you're like, why do I do that? Why do I act like that? Why do I talk like that? Why do I behave like that? Where did it come from? You yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. The, the personality is like an amalgamation of like learned behaviors. And it is like the Taoists, a lot of the Taoists say like, you know, you just want to eliminate the personality to like, you know, like over time, over life, like to where you just get to the core of who you really are, just being, you know what I mean? Cause like, it's like a different, like the personality is like kind of in projections, like learn behavior. And then it's like being is this presence. And I feel like that whole process of like removing personality and cause yeah, like you said, it's like a generational thing where I don't know, like, you know, I, sometimes I laugh like my uncle or whatever, it could be anything like that, like, you know what I mean? Or it's it's like really deeply embedded in this, the spirit of, you know, like, it's like an, you know, the body is kind of like an amalgamation. So I think it's like, there's like a program. And um, yeah, I think the more that you, you know, reduce ingredients that you don't need and you go over time, you know, you, you get rid of things that you don't need, you know, less is more. And I, yeah, I, I feel like it's, Especially, you are a vessel too. I feel like, especially with with people that have passed, I definitely feel them too, coming through me. Like what do you mean by that? Like people that have died in my life, I feel like um, at different times, uh, especially like a fasting or if you want, 
yeah. plant medicine, what have you. I feel like I, you can. I, I just feel more like a, like a vessel for them to kind of like realize themselves through. Yeah. And then it's like an interface moment. I feel like. Do you feel chords? Like I maybe do. past relationships or just do. with family. Like my son, I feel a super strong chord with my son. Mm -hmm. Like energetic, energy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And umbilical really cords always there. Oh my gosh! And yeah. the crazy thing is, like he, his, him and I used to be really close when he was little, and then ever since I moved to LA, our relationship just, you know, like they're not that far away. I still see them all the time, but you know, he's sixteen now, and he has just kind of pushed me away and been very distant from me. So, but I still feel him. Like I still feel his energy, like the connection. I'm so crazy. Yeah. And I think that's like the core there, like all this stuff, like pushing you away stuff. I think that's like all personality and like resistance. I don't think that's who he is. I think who he is is like who he has always been connected to. You know what I mean? That's what you. I feel like you feel his authentic self. Yeah, yeah I, I know. Think, I don't think, the the hard part is that when people don't realize that they're acting out of personality, like this thing that's been, that has been created that's not truly them, but you can see that it's not them, but they can't see. It's really hard, right? Yeah. It's like really hard to connect with somebody who you're like you're not being yourself. Yeah. 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 It's what like a sleight of hand. hand. They just don't, I mean, they heavily identify with it. It's like, it, yeah. and then it gets certain things from life to where they like, oh, well, I'll just associate with that because I get certain benefits, so. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, that's I just a learned it. way of yeah. how I've been dealing again. Yeah, it's like a shared body. I feel like at that point, like the, the personality really, it's like, it really is a parasite at that point. It's like. Wow, that's <laughs> a good word for it. <laughs> yeah. It's a parasite that you don't even know is taking you over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> you're making deals with that thing like, yeah. and the weird part is that when you start to shed that layer of yourself right it feels like you're dying yeah, yeah. it's like it's like a like a, a level of ego death in a sense right yeah. Yeah. it's like a personality purge it's like whoa that's the only thing i've ever known me to be my whole life yeah and then you know as these layers start to come off um, yeah, it feels like it feels so scary to let go of that aspect of who you think you are. Yeah. 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 And once you do, you kind of experience what freedom is. You know, like without those filters and those parasites, really, that you've you've been relying on for survival. Um, I, I felt that like when I did like a long fast, it it was scary because you know. It's everything you've learned and you've survived with. And then you identify these filters you've been using and like ways to suppress part of yourself to like appease those around you or whatever, like shame, things like that. And uh, and once you let go, it's kind of like, well, now I can just live in the moment and be who I'm supposed to be right now and not have these expectations for other people or what have you. I think that's why the deeper you go into your spiritual practice, or like just, just figuring out who you are, the less you want to hang out with people who still see you for who you used to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that ever happen? Like, you know, because you change, but then they don't, the, all they see is who you used to be, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And they still act accordingly or treat you the same way Right. And you're and you're like under here, like, I'm not the same person. You know, I'm different, you know, but they can't see past the, their projection of, of who they think you are. Yeah. 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 You're, I mean, you're more yourself. You yeah. know, you're just more yourself. And like they that I feel like they have a heavy association with their false self or their personality to where if you, you know, they want to endorse your false self. Because it like supports their their, their false self, self, you know. What totally. I mean? You know, and that's and that's why yeah. it's that's why things are really delicate. I feel like in this world, as far as like if you take a job or if you take certain positions working with people, like they have to at some level, you know, really reinforce like reality, being real, being who they really are, or you're gonna all be like kind of just supporting the re the illusion. You all be some, like in living in in a conceptual illusion that's not actual. Like, it, you know, nobody is. I feel like 
it's like a a collective agreement to lie to ourselves, and uh, and that's it's. I feel like it's the the most painful part of living in society like this. Like you know, you, people have whatever their limitations are or whatever they identify with as far as their limitations, and then that creates like a certain kind of hunger in them, and then that creates a lifestyle, and then they gotta feed that lifestyle and maintain it, and then it's like everybody else like wants to do the same thing with their false selves lifestyle and like they all everybody's like supporting the illusion together and it's like as soon as you break away from that they're like man you know like it's it really is like fearing for its life like the false self in them is like trying to continually wake up the illusion in you like keep you in it yeah and i think yeah it's, that's it's, it's tough yeah i think it's the hardest part like about doing anything with people in this world right now and when you finally see someone who is conscious and you look them in the eye it's just like this unspoken understanding of like i see you yeah, you don't have to edit yourself. Yeah. You know, it's so yeah. exhausting. You know? Yeah, and it's so nice when you finally find somebody, you can just let everything go. Yeah. 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 You feel it inside 100%. You know, you really just got to, when you edit yourself, it costs a lot of energy, and then you have a hunger for foods that you would have never eaten. That's that from my experience. I feel like if I'm when you edit yourself, like that's if, strong. if I have to be not my whole self, if I have to slice off pieces and to be around people, I'm like, man, this is exhausting and then now I'm, I have a crazy appetite my appetite is not the same I want certain, I want bad food combinations yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. the more you, you the less authentic that you can be the more you want to numb that oh shit the more you want to numb that so think about when you're a kid growing up in a home where you're judged you're criticized you're not accepted your dreams are shut down no wonder kids grow up you know like it's start all those all those eating disorders and like emotional eating starts in childhood and then that's when their personality starts to form yeah, yeah. and yeah. the whole like self-conscious nature of the this place kind of it, it sets everybody up for having to make filters and having to compensate for not being authentic i think yeah yeah we start off like young, young, kind of really like we're emotionally not sober. I feel like people like very prideful or and I feel like shame is just like like the other side of pride. Like I feel like people are, for, for the most part, are very ashamed and very prideful. It's all unconsciousness in different respects, like different names for unconsciousness. But I feel like that is what I guess inebriation where it starts. I feel like. Um, to, to, for you, in order for you to start, you know, attack, it's, it's an autoimmune disorder. Right? That's why I feel like it's a parasite thing where, you know, you're attacking yourself for some respect or whatever, for whatever it is. But I think ultimately it is some sort of inebriation, like where you have some sort of pride or some sort of, you know, resistance to growth. And so you, um, you know, you, you feel like uh, I can just ignore or I can bypass and I can do this. I can eat this food and, and instead of like satisfying my emotional hungers, I'm going to have the physical food or instead of, you know, I feel like that's it starts at like an emotional level. Like and that's why I feel like going raw really feel like shows you where your emotions are and like how and your addiction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You be drunk off of pride, man. I'm drunk off of anger. I think that like um, when it comes to like pain and pleasure like what so so many people have like confuse uh the euphoria from pain as pleasure and i think that's kind of kind of what happens with those type of scenarios where you like yeah play the sad song again and play this again it's like this different like you get like a rush of endorphin you know whatever it is you know it's like it's but we yeah. most of most of society lives like that yeah yeah right yeah. yeah they listen to the sad song over and over and over again regardless of how yeah. it's making them feel yeah yeah and that's why i feel like that's pride or sh shame and pride of like two sides of the same coin like yeah it's like and i and i feel like the, the food really perpetuates it because the nervous system is so shot from the foods that people eat that they you know they're just in their feelings you know they, they don't know and that's why i feel like the breath is key the breath and like your approach to sexuality has a lot to do with your approach to food. I feel like, you know, people are, we've been taught to be really frivolous sexually. And I feel like mm -hmm. if we had a lot more respect for that, then people would not have the appetites that they have. I feel like, you know, 
Like that, we we're in a well, porn culture. It's like, gluttony of gluttony <laughs> of everything. Yeah, gluttony of porn, exactly. gluttony of sex, gluttony of food, gluttony yeah. of YouTube binging, gluttony yeah. of social media. Like everybody's just stuck in gluttony. All the like, overuse, yeah. All of them. Everything. Just yeah. on steroids. Yeah. Yeah, the porn industry, oh my gosh, it's ruining people, ruining marriages. Yeah. It's so sad. Like if a if a man is willing to like just toss away all that with a, you know, however, you know, his seed, which is very, you know, should be very valuable to him. If he's really willing to just throw that away, it's like, how can he really even have respect for his diet correctly? It's, you mm-hmm. know, he's already compromised. Like, it's such a massive loss of energy. And then I just feel like it ruins, like, the dynamic between men and women because, like, we're supposed to be able to charge each other, whether it's, it doesn't have to be a sexual relationship. It could just be anything. You can be business partners, but I feel like just men and women working together, just like, uh, invigorating like energetically for people and if you know if somebody's not treating themselves right and they're just throwing their energy away throwing their seed away then they can't really show up for the other side and then I feel like it just creates such a problem like in the flow of energy and then yeah hunger just follows that yeah. Like, yeah. I mean it even shows up in marriages and relationships too anytime I had too much sex in a relationship it just made me want to have sex with other people because mm. it's just like overindulgence I feel like just it just where does it stop mm. and not even that I never cheated but it just I, that I don't want to live with the urge though mm-hmm. it's not good. it's not a fun thing yeah. now because yeah. I mean at that point yeah, I feel like yeah you're just like masturbation partners like I'm just using your body to masturbate with this thing that's and I feel like that the food again is like correlates with the consciousness like I don't think there's any way that you can be drug free and live foods and have that approach to sex I don't yeah. think it's possible. You know, I yeah. think if you have respect for yourself, then you know, then your I think your relationship with food is going to be a lot better. It's so interesting because even when you go to like, let's say somebody goes to marriage counseling, right? First thing they're going to ask is like, "Well, how's your sex life?" I'm like, why are <laughs> they like asking like, program. "How was yeah. your connection? Yeah. How's yeah. your it's communication?" Just, you know what I mean? Like, important. why does it always have to come back to that? You know? Like, yeah. 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 Yeah, she'd be like, what do you do besides that? Yeah, like, like what, what do you do outside of that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like what what the society has placed all its importance on is sex, and they sell everything using that. Like, like, well, there's an agenda behind that. Yeah. It's for yeah. a reason, and when we just go along with it, we're just like, oh, this is cool. This is what we're supposed to do, and, you know, and, um, but yet everybody's working nine to five jobs, working as a slave, miserable, yeah. unhappy, yeah. in debt. Yeah. You know, and not not living their dream life, not living their dreams, you know, just kind of under this spell, under this sedative, like you said. Yeah. 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 That's why I feel like you got to really, like, like you were saying, like, as far as, like, you know, your, your spiritual practice, your metaphysical practice, like, it has to be something daily like that. You got to get that win, like, that metaphysical or spiritual practice every day and some type of physical or, and then creative practice and something to learn I think every day you know whereas I, I feel like people are so focused on um, uh, things that they can show people more than like you know actually learn you know things that they can learn and like actual real growth I feel like the, the showmanship aspect of it really kind of clouded it you know it well or it's, it's either that or survival people are in survival mode or they're just like trying to flaunt things and I think um, if you you were just more real with yourself, you know, and, and you have developed some type of spiritual practice or multiple spiritual practices, different outlets and stuff, then, you know, you really, um, I, I just think that all your relationships, whether it be food or, you know, with yourself, business, whatever, friendships, all of that, it's just going to be centered around health, like, or people are just not going to be able to meet you there. They know they, they can't even talk to you, like, I think at that point, they're like, I don't want to waste your time, you know? They know, like, oh, well, I'm not healthy enough really to even to have more than a certain kind of dynamic with you. Like, I can only, like, be, like, a higher vibe person. I can't really well, where's be... where's the conversation going to go, really? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, you know, we could say, like, you know, no one's above or below each other, right? But there are people who resonate with one another. Mm-hmm. And... That's why finding community is so important because like let's say you let's say you have a job and you're eating this way, right? And you your 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 values and your goals are just in one area, then you have like have to try to be something that you're not to fit in, have conversations about things that don't interest you. Mm-hmm. 
It's like, do we really want to put our time into that? No, it's exhausting. Yeah, it's really exhausting. It's it's taxing on you and your own authenticity because you're trying to meet people that are, you know, full of distraction. Like like most of the conversations are really just distractions from facing themselves. Yeah, it's kind of painful to to engage in. For me now, at this point in my life. Like, if we're going to hang out and we're going to spend time with each other, let's build something together. Let's co- mm. collaborate on something together. That's what my diet has done or what my health journey, my spiritual path, because they go hand in hand. Yeah. It has really been a platform to propel me into my purpose. Yeah. Like, what yeah. do I, what, because I always felt that I was meant to do something. I had a great purpose, didn't know what it was. The more clean I got, the cleaner my body got. The more spiritual I got, the more clarity I got, the more vision I could see, like I could, you know, see the vision more clearly. I felt like I was really being pulled into my purpose. Yeah. It's not really something that you're reaching for. You have to figure it out what it is. It's like once you align yourself with your highest version of yourself or your highest path, like it pulls you. Oh, I just got, oh. I love that. Do you ever get goosebumps or chills like when you're speaking truth and it's like angels are telling you like, yes, this is true. <laughs> Keep it going. Yeah. 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 And I think that it's, it's more so like, do you want the, the are you going to be concerned with the effects or, you know, or, you know, is it more so about the cause of things? Like, like you said, like purpose. I think people are more so concerned with the effects of like, you know, if you're in it for, if you're in the food for the, purely for the flavor and the texture and the dopamine from like getting it, like a, like achieving it, I guess, like whatever, or if you're in it, this into the sex for like purely for the euphoria and not for the connection, mm-hmm. like it's, the intention. yeah, like you're not really in it for like the, the real gold. It's all glitter. It's not really, you know, it's all, you're all into the effects and I feel like, yeah, you, there's no way you can ever have like any real purpose because it's, it's all, you doing you doing things for the byproduct. Like you don't really want the creation. You want like the byproducts of it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like you want to stimulate creation and then cut it off at some point and then like reap some byproducts. And I think that's kind of like the difference. Like where, if you really get into purpose, you're like like what really is what really matters. You know what really is, um, of real value and like. I just feel like what is eternal and what, and what changes, you know, what, you know, that's, I guess the measuring stick is like, there's this eternal part of you that is you. And then it's like, everything else is kind of like temporary. That's there as a reflection of, of the eternal, you know, you, the aspect of you or the reality of you. And, um, I think that when you try to like hold things, you try to grasp things, you know, you, you get caught up in, in bad cycles like that. Like, um, cause you're trying to define yourself. I feel like if you're in a personality, you're like, oh, I can't learn this. I can't learn geometry or I can't learn, I can't do this. this I'm not good at this or whatever. And you don't, you know, you're like defining who you are. And, and then I think that that's where you're getting away from that eternal nature. And then it's easier to like, say like, well, I'll just bypass like long-term satisfaction, long-term contentment for like fleeting pleasure. And then yeah, you want to just get into eating things that you should not be eating. and yeah. It's like being, spiritual bypassing, too. Yeah. Like being the fickle life. Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, just that dopamine chase or even, even the toxic positivity where people um, are not doing the inner work and just trying to cover it up with positivity. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, that's another filter, totally. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, you got, it's got to be holistic, like you were saying, like the, 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 the lifestyle, of, with, with your, your meal style and your, um, your habits, yeah, your, you know, the, your, your mental diet. So let's talk about lifestyle habits. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, um, what do you guys do? Like for healthy, I know you have a rebounder, so you do rebounding. Yeah. I'm What's just, that? 
What? A rebounder. What's a rebounder? Oh, it's a trampoline. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I was like, what is that? All right, yeah. For lymphatic. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's a different right. word for yeah. mini trampoline. Yeah, I get it. Okay. <sighs> yeah, no, I've heard those things help, though. Yeah. yeah, those are great. I use mine like. <laughs> he, yeah. He's never been able to use one. He's too much. I go to a park or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm short. I can use mine anywhere. Uh, but yeah, I use my rebounder. I. I do a lot of fasting. I, I uh, you know, I've done like extended juice fasts, and uh, I kind of, um, I keep everything that I eat and consume, like living things for my living cells, uh, breath work, meditation. Um, you practice breath work by yourself or online or with a group? Yeah, I do it by myself, just like the three, guided three ones. part breath, like. That one or a different kind? I do that one. I do like uh, uh, like fire and ice breathing. I do like Wim Hof kind of breathing, box breathing. I can't, can't imagine you doing that. I'm trying to picture it right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool though. Yeah, but I do you, do, you, do you do ice baths or anything? I do like infrared saunas and I do cold showers. Uh, the cold showers are not my favorite thing to do. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, they suck. I don't like, I'd rather just dunk dunk in a pool than have to take a cold shower. Yeah, yeah. I like worked my way up to three minutes a day, and it just never got easier. So, you know, when I get myself into it in the summer, I'll do it. But like, yeah, it's cold. I don't like being cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What about, what about you, Taylor? Um, yeah, I, I do. Uh, I start the day with a with a walk to get you know the blood in my limbs, and then do some breath work. Do a, you know a pretty like extensive session of breath work, and then uh, um, I, I I definitely read and write every day. I, you know, focus on lately like you know learning language and um, you know just studying like Hebrew and Latin, and uh, I, I drink a lot of. Um, herb like like ground herbs like powder herbs like in tea and stuff like that and then like typically my week will be like like every week to 10 days i'll have like a salad or something but besides that i only have really um tea juice fruit smoothies and then i have like a, a vegan protein shake so, so most mostly like liquidarian type lifestyle yeah mostly yeah. liquidarian but like every like seven to ten days um I'll come off the mountain and go to town and uh, <laughs> like I need to go yeah, yeah. like the same <laughs> exact way. Yeah. Like seven to ten yeah. days, like a good salad. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then I, I feel like it holds me over for you know for a while. I'm like, okay, all right, I'm good. You know, and then, then you know around that same time it comes back around, and that's that's I guess that's the, the short and skinny of my my routine. So probably like three four times a month I. I grab myself or something like that, and the rest of the time is yeah, mostly, mostly liquids. Uh, Have you played around with water fasting or dry fasting? Yeah, no, nah, I, I got I got really deep into it for a long time. Um, I had uh, the longest. Well, I need to do a longer water fast though. The longest water fast I ever done was only thirteen days, but I did like I've done like ninety days on just I done like ninety four days on just coconut water and like. 90 days on yeah. green juice before stuff like that and um i feel like those are the most transformational yeah, things right yeah. that we can do yeah. is long extended juice fast and you had a really long juice cleanse too right yeah i did 315 days 315 days wow yeah. that's impressive it changed everything yeah oh yeah that's everything impressive. there's no go back there's no going back to certain things after something like that you can't yeah mm -hmm. you try you just yeah. you and what is a year 365 yeah yeah, yeah it's almost a year yeah that's yeah okay yeah. so what are you gonna say it changed everything it changed everything yeah just uh the way the way i look at us as humans our bodies the way I mean, this world is constructed and just seeing how much it works against us kind of and what we really are and all we really want is, you know, love, safety and comfort. But, you know, it's it's kind of hard to achieve that with everything working against you here. So yeah. going back to like the daily practices, it's it's all about those daily practices and mm -hmm. Yeah. And just uh, keeping like truth around you, true people, authenticity, yeah. surrounding yourself with it. Um, I think you gotta play too. 
Yeah, whatever you like to do to play. I, don't know, I like I like basketball. I like to just play at least a few times a week. I think you need to just I like bike riding. Yeah. yeah. So where you just forget about time for yeah. a period. Yeah. I go yeah. running yeah. every day. Um, yeah. play music. You guys do music too. Yeah, I like to put headphones in and listen to like beautiful like inspirational classical music or these epic soundtracks or just, just something really beautiful without words. Mm -hmm. With instruments. Yeah. And then I ride my bike down these I keep saying the word beautiful, but I love the word beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful neighborhoods with these mansions and nice gardens, you know? Yeah. Like these yeah. pretty parks. Yeah, create some beauty in your oh mind. Oh my gosh. And then you could just feel the, the breeze and the sun shining and like the trees are so beautiful. Everything just becomes so clear and the colors are so bright. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. 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 I, I end up listening to like kind of more aggressive music sometimes. And <laughs> I could yeah. not yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. let some steam off. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I might go to the gym like two to three times a week and I I can't go to the gym and listen to non aggressive music. I don't know if I can. Really? Yeah. Well Yeah. When I, go I around, listen to like hip, like hip hop type stuff, like that makes me feel sexy. The stuff I used to dance to at the club. I'm like, all right, I can listen to some Kesha at the gym or something, okay, or like, yeah. you know, but um, I, I'm not, I don't want to listen to it on a daily basis just because I don't want it going into my subconscious. subconscious. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not really. Yeah, so I try to listen to things that are really uplifting. Yeah, if it's if it's yeah. upbeat, then I can do it in gym. Though. Don't get me wrong. It's just uh, what about like EDM type stuff? Every now and again, I guess I could. I guess I could. I mean, I, I, I could do breath work and stuff like that too. Sometimes it depends. It depends. It's all mood. Music is a mood thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Well, it will affect your mood. So whatever you listen to, it's gonna alter the mood that you're in. So yeah. Yeah. If I listen to something upbeat and positive, I'm gonna feel like, all right, let's do this. Yeah. If I listen to a sad song, it's gonna bring back a memory. It's gonna make me feel. Oh, yeah. definitely. You know, like, yeah. Pull me right back into the past. It's time traveling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we are portals. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't like to like go away from whatever the moment is, you know what I mean? Like, if it's, I kept trying to just accent whatever's present, because it's like, I don't really, like, you are saying toxic positivity. If I'm not feeling it right now, I'm not going to put certain <laughs> yeah. things like, like, I can't, yeah. 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 Right. If I'm having a bad day, you know it. Like, I yeah. can't put yeah. a, fake, yeah. a fake face yeah. on it all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, on those days, I just want to listen to something that is feeling me and let it out and just purge that feeling and then move on. That's so funny. What I do when I'm feeling that way is I put on frequencies, like healing sulfagio frequencies. Yes. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah. Those are cool to sleep to also. I'll just, yeah, we'll be sleeping on a sleep track. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. This is right, awesome. Good. Yeah, so it's, um, March 9th, right? Oh, yeah. Forward. Okay, so let me tell you guys about the Raw Food oh, Worldwide yeah. Meetup. And I'll tell you guys, too, because, you know. Um, March 9th, I initiated... I have I have a Raw Food Meetup here in Los Angeles. And it has grown so much. People all over have been messaging me, seeing my reels, my videos from the meetup, saying, oh, I wish we could come. I wish I was local to L.A. And I've been telling people, just start your own meetup, but people don't really feel supported and they want to feel connected to what we're doing in Los Angeles. So I initiated, a, it just came to me like a month ago. I was like, you know, let's just do a worldwide thing and everybody could, you know, host their own meetup in their city. So we have 60, as of right now, signed up 60 hosts all around the world that are going to be uh, doing raw food meetups all on the same day, March 9th, 2024. This has never been done before in history. Yeah. Yeah. People need that. It's cool, right? Yeah. You guys, like, this is really cool. Yeah. 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 So, I'm so glad that, um, you, are you coming? Absolutely. Are you going to try and come? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I will. I'm going to try to dodge the storm. I think another one's coming my way. So I probably will just hang out, linger in L.A. And, yeah. You know, come by. Saturday, it would be right? so awesome. It's, well, today's Saturday, so yeah, a week from yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. From today. Literally right. a week from today. It's going to be awesome. So if you are in L.A., uh, come to our meetup on March 9th, March 9th in Santa Monica. And the link's in my bio. And also... If you are not in LA, you can attend a meetup in your city. You can go to Instagram, the Raw Food Worldwide Meetup. Check the link in the bio. See if there's a city hosting 
where you are. If not, you're welcome to host. Send me a DM. My name is Jamie Love. You can find me on agelessbeauty143 on Instagram. You can send me a message. Uh, and do you want to share how people can find you? Uh, I'm on Instagram. My username is Annette, U-H-H-N-N-E-T-T-E. And I'm, I'm Taylor Durden. All one word, Taylor Durden, like Tyler Durden from Fight Club, but Taylor Durden. <laughs> I'll, nice. put, I'll put links nice to their social media. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll link them in the, the description. That's deep. <laughs> That's deep. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Tune in right. next time. Right. See you later. All right.